The Tesla Powerwall 3 might just be the best home battery to date, and it could make having an affordable backup battery with solar available to all. So in this video, we're gonna be going over the five most important things that you need to know about the Tesla Powerwall 3, including how its bi-directional charging feature could put every other home solar battery out of business. And make sure that you stick around until the end because I will be going over exactly how much you should expect to pay for one of these batteries with installation in order so that you can get the best deal. The first thing to cover regarding the Tesla Powerwall 3 is going to be the battery capacity. The Tesla Powerwall 3 will offer a battery capacity of 13.5 kilowatt hours a number that did not change much from the Tesla Powerwall 2. Now, for some people who are just looking to use the battery at nighttime to power the house, this is gonna be very reasonable. And I would presume this is one of the reasons why Tesla did not choose to change it by much from the earlier model. The average house in California, which I'm gonna use as the example for it's the biggest battery market in the country, will use about 25 to 30 kilowatt hours a day. Of that, about 70 to 75% will come during the hours of 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. in which the panels are gonna be powering the house, leaving the batteries responsible to power the house from the hours of 7 p.m to 9 a.m. depending upon the time of year. Now, if you're looking at using the battery for more than just a nighttime power solution, such as having backup for a number of days, no worries, you can scale up to four Tesla Powerwalls together, totaling 54 kilowatt hours of storage. Now, the Tesla Powerwall 2 was one of the best-selling batteries over the past five years, but if you compared it to other batteries at the time, you would know that it had a very large handicap which was that it had a relatively low power output compared to other options in the market. And when I speak about power output, I'm simply referring to the rate at which the battery can discharge its energy to power home appliances in order to avoid having to pull from the grid. And so the higher the power output, the better. The Tesla Powerwall 2 had a power output of five kilowatts continuous. And while that was sufficient to power all of the 120 volt outlets in the house, as well as the 240 volt outlets, such as the home refrigerator, electric stove and clothes dryer all together in unison, that was going to be possible. However, if you wanted to think about adding into the mix an air conditioner, that was just not gonna be possible. In fact, starting up a single 510 AC and being able to run it with one Tesla Powerwall 2 with nothing else being backed up would just not be achievable. And that's just not gonna make a lot of sense for people who wanna invest into a home battery to be able to have an HVAC system operational if you happen to experience a sustained outage in the middle of the summer or winter and you wanna stay home with the family. And so fortunately, Tesla caught onto this and they have more than doubled the power output for the Tesla Powerwall 3 so that it now offers 11.5 kilowatts of continuous power supply, making it very achievable to power all HVAC systems in a grid down scenario, as well as other loads at the same time. And as a reminder, since you can stack these batteries up to four, you can get this power output all the way up to 46 kilowatt hours continuous, depending upon how many power walls you choose to invest into. The next feature about the Tesla Powerwall 3 that makes it such an appealing battery is going to be the battery chemistry. The Tesla Powerwall 3 has switched over from using the old school nickel manganese cobalt or NMC chemistry to now using the lithium iron phosphate LFP chemistry. Without getting too deep into chemistry jargon, for a long time, home solar batteries used an NMC chemistry, but began switching over to an LFP chemistry about a decade ago, as for it is a safer battery chemistry, since it has a lower risk of thermal runway. And two, thanks to economies of scale and innovation, with these LFP batteries, in part because of the EV transition, which all use LFP in the batteries, the performance has far exceeded in power output, and the cycle life is much better than NMC, meaning these batteries can last much longer and with more cycles than the previous versions. Another change with the Tesla Powerwall 3 is that it will switch over from being AC coupled to DC coupled. Why Tesla did this is because instead of just making a battery, which they would sell out to contractors or homeowners individually, you're now installing an all-in-one Tesla system. So previously with an AC coupled Tesla Powerwall 2, you may have panels on the roof that produced in DC, and then your microinverters convert that into AC, but since batteries store electricity in DC, you must have another conversion, and then to power the loads in the house, you have to go back to AC. Not only does this cause you to have to invest into another inverter system, but you also lose about three to 4% of the power that the panels produce, from the extra conversion loss. And so now with the Tesla Powerwall 3, the main way which you'll see them installed 
is without individual microinverters on the roof so that the DC power that the panels produce goes straight into the battery and then from there is converted into AC to power the house. Now, Tesla will be coming out with an AC coupled version of this battery soon. So you will be able to retrofit or use microinverters. But I would say for brand new solar plus storage installations, you're likely better off just keeping it all DC coupled in order to maximize the system's output and keep it all under just one brand. As far as new features are concerned with the Tesla Powerwall 3, one thing that you will notice off the bat is that they combine the controller, which essentially is the computer system and with the battery and the inverter. So the whole battery is one unit or stack. Most other battery systems, there are two or even three components when you add everything together. And what that can lead to is a very spacious installation that's less feasible when you have limited wall space or a specific location in the garage or outside the house, which you want to put the batteries. And two, since the battery integrated the components all together, they have made the installation times much shorter. And so installers can carry over a lesser price to homeowners now that there's less labor costs associated with the installation. One of the biggest benefits that homeowners will be able to have with the Tesla Powerwall 3 is going to be bi-directional charging. Bi-directional charging or vehicle to home charging has become one of the most talked about technologies in the residential solar industry for a while. And what it would mean is that in the event of a power outage, homeowners with an electric vehicle could discharge their car's stored electricity to the battery, then powering the loads in their house. And this is really game changing because per se, you only have one Tesla Powerwall 3 that has 13.5 kilowatt hours of storage. Though you own a Tesla Cybertruck and you experience an outage and at that time you have 100 kilowatt hours of storage in your truck. Well, now your home backup system in theory has 113.5 kilowatt hours of storage and all that you're limited to in powering the house is the power output of the number of batteries that you have. This is referred to as Tesla PowerShare and is actually not released yet, though many online forums and insiders have pointed to 2025 as the release date. For the moment, it would only be available to homeowners with the Tesla Cybertruck paired with additional Tesla firmware that would be sold separately. It is also rumored that non-Cybertruck electrical vehicles in the future would be able to discharge onto the Powerwall 3 system, but this has all been speculation and it would likely take years to become available. The last and maybe most important feature about the Tesla Powerwall 3 that makes it such a game changer is going to be the price reduction from the Tesla Powerwall 2. I'll get into the numbers here in a sec, but when we're comparing solar batteries on price, we're gonna wanna look at the price per kilowatt hour of storage as the biggest variable, as for some of these batteries are higher and lower in storage capacity, and that can really dictate the price. And so when we take a look at the overall price per kilowatt hour of storage, the Tesla Powerwall 3 shocked everybody and now has one of the lowest price per kilowatt hours in the industry. And there's really three major factors that are making the Tesla Powerwall 3 less expensive than everybody else on the market. The first one is what we talked about earlier, which is that they've combined the controller and the inverter into one singular unit, decreasing the installation timelines by hours. This is really significant because per se, you have two or three battery electricians on the job site each being paid 40 to $60 an hour, shaving off four to six hours of installation timelines can lower the variable costs substantially for contractors. But that's not really where they're saving the money. The main place where they're gonna be saving everybody money is by doing two things. The first one is being first to market with what is called the meter socket adapter. The meter caller, or also called by Tesla the backup switch, replaces the need to rewire all of the critical loads into its own sub panel. And that in and of itself is gonna shave about three to four thousand dollars of equipment costs off the installation. And what they're gonna do is remove that and then replace it with what costs them a thousand dollar piece of hardware that is basically installed behind the meter on your electrical panel. And so with all new Tesla Powerwall 3 installations, there will now be either a backup gateway or a backup switch. It just depends on whether or not your utility meter and main panel box are combined. And so what they were able to do is shave off more than three and a half hours of installation timeline as shown by this video which is partly the reason why the Tesla Powerwall 3s have become significantly more affordable than the previous version Powerwall 2. And then the third factor, which is making them way more cheap than everybody else, is the fact that Tesla is likely doing something which they've done before with their cars, which is that when they first release a new product, they go super low on the price initially, 
so that they can generate a large amount of initial sales and interest from homeowners. And then usually after about six to 12 months, they bump up the price and keep it there moving forward. So let's get into the exact installation costs. If you're looking to install a Powerwall 3 included into your solar project, you can expect to pay about 9,500 for the first battery and 8,500 for each additional battery after that. How this battery was designed, it is mainly intended for new solar plus storage installations. And so if you already have solar or you're only looking to add the Powerwall 3 to your system, the prices would likely be a lot higher. Therefore, I typically recommend the Franklin Whole Home or the Enphase 5P as batteries for retrofit battery only upgrades instead of the Tesla Powerwall 3. Now, Tesla themselves do not actually have internal installation crews. If you buy directly from the Tesla website, they are gonna subcontract your project out to another installer. So if you're looking for the best price, I would likely look towards large nationwide installers who buy these batteries in bulk and do not do any subcontracting. If you're not familiar with the channel, here at Solar Pros, we work directly with many of these large installers in over 20 states. So if you'd like to get a quote for one or more of the Tesla Powerwall 3s, you can head over to our website down below to see if you live in a state that we can service and we can send you over a proposal. However, I do always recommend looking at all of the different battery options that there are in the market prior to committing to one brand. So make sure that you check out my video going over the top five solar batteries of 2024, which will appear on the screen now. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time.